Hello everyone and welcome to Linux Desktop December Part 12 where I'm looking at the Xface desktop environment. So Xface started out live in 1996 and according to the Wikipedia page it was designed as an alternative to the common desktop environment CDE which I looked at earlier this month. At the time CDE was a proprietary desktop so they wanted something free open source and we got Xface as an alternative. Now it doesn't really bear any resemblance to CDE nowadays and I wasn't really aware of the association. You look at it now and you look at CDE and I wouldn't have thought there was any association there. So despite the age of X-Face, it doesn't really look that old-fashioned. It has evolved over time and I'm looking at it here in Solid X. So although development has almost ground to a halt on X-Face, there was a, a minor release recently, but uh, in the last couple of weeks, it doesn't seem too bad an issue though because uh, the desktop is very mature. It doesn't seem to need a whole lot more to it. Yeah, other desktops have other features to them, like the ability to add widgets, but you know, Xface still feels a very good usable desktop. Starting with the memory usage, Solid X is using 660 meg of RAM with this Xface desktop. It's not particularly lightweight despite appearances. The application launcher is called the Whisker menu and it has a text searcher, which is uh, pretty responsive. So it's got LibreOffice Writer within a couple of key presses and I can scroll up and down that list with the arrow keys and then press enter to open an application. Scrolling over these folders selects them, at least they're spaced out enough that you're not going to accidentally select the wrong one or just nudge the mouse and uh, go flying across the whole lot. When you've got the full list here you can scroll up and down with the mouse wheel or pick up the scroll bar and drag it or you know, move the scroll bar around in a natural way. It's uh, got that flexibility. You can resize the whisker menu, simply like that. Then we have shortcuts to the settings manager, lock screen, switch in users and log out. Here's the settings manager. So you can change the appearance. Uh, to be fair, they, this theme does look quite nice and uh, modern really. You've got curved edges, yeah, that's nice. It, it doesn't look a particularly old fashioned desktop. Got a few icon themes to choose from, but that's more the distro choice really. You can change the font, oh that's a bit of an unusual one, changing the anti-aliasing in a very simple way. It's going to do its best to render a nice appearance. That's the settings manager for appearances. Customising the panel, now you notice with the panel there it does have a slight transparency. Let's get rid of a LibreOffice writer. Yeah. So you can change the modes on the panel, you can choose a vertical position, the desk bar, which gives you an iconified view. You can change its size very easily and uh, oh, there's the transparency setting there. So I could set it even more transparent. Oh, very nice, very nice. Can I change the background colour as well? Oh, look at that. There is, that's some good flexibility there. Come on, let's just mess around. Uh, yep, let's go for that. <laughs> cool. That's a way of changing the items within the panel. So I've got the option to add additional panels and I could change it to a smaller size and I could recreate the Unity desktop. Oh, steady there, recreating the Unity desktop in X-Phase. Opening up the Funar file manager. For some reason it seemed to replicate the behaviour of Windows Explorer with the lack of tabbed browsing. It's very easy to rectify and I've done that here. So you can just enable it by going to Preferences, Behaviour, and then middle click open a new tab. It's opening up a picture. Oh, it looks like we might be able to do a little bit of editing in this image. What can we do? Oh, that's just opening it in an editor. So no, actually we can't edit it. It relies on a third party editor. Uh, it's just resizing the zoom, isn't it? Riz Toretto is just an image viewer. Opening up a bash script. Uh, it's very plain and dull this, isn't it? There's no colorization on the code. What happens if I drag the application to the side of the screen? Nothing, it doesn't resize to halves or anything, so... Dragging it to the top maximizes the application. I don't have any videos loaded onto this distro, but uh, I can open VLC. So if I right click on it, there is no multimedia integration, but there is a pop-up for VLC here on the bottom right hand side of the panel. So I can play, pause and rewind from here. 
So I suppose with Firefox, there'll be no way of launching an incognito window from here. No, there isn't. It's just the same basic selection of settings. Maximize it, minimize it, close it, or move it to a different workspace. So looking a bit further into the settings menu, we'll just go into the window manager tweaks. Under the compositor, we can change some of the window decoration settings, changing the opacity here. You can get more by changing the compositor to Compiz. Not something I've attempted, but I'm aware that uh, it can be done. And it's mentioned a workspace again, but I've noticed one thing I'm missing from this panel is a workspace switcher. I wonder if that's something I can add to it. Let's see, add new items. So we can do a search. I'm going to try that, I suppose. Work. Not workspace switcher. Ah. There we go. So I can have it switch between four different desktops. Thinking about switching between the desktops, what's it like switching between the applications, the Alt and Tab? It's an iconified view. One thing that is missing here is the ability to add widgets to the desktop. And if I go across to the Xface Look website, you can see widgets is not even a part of Xface. It's not to say you can't add anything to the desktop, I suppose you can add conky scripts, but I'm looking more at the desktop specific features. No, it's not an item. Seem to be plenty of uh, themes we can get. 800 themes to choose from. Well, wow, just in case the uh, standard selection isn't suitable for you. So it does have some customization features, but you yeah. know. So that was a look at the X-Face desktop. I mean, overall it's usable, it's responsive. It's a bit limiting in places on some of the theming and the ability to add extra widgets, but you know, if that's not something you're interested in, then you know, it's not really a problem, is it? In terms of the slow progress of a desktop, I don't really think it's a huge problem. It's a very mature desktop environment. Well, thanks for watching. See you all later.